Okay, so we're going to talk about the language and the perfect day for banana fish for a little bit. Um, so first I'd like to talk about the dialogue. Um, let me find. So Salinger writes his dialogue so that it sounds like these conversations could actually be happening. So when M Muriel and her mom are talking on the phone, it's really realistic. It sounds like you could take this conversation out of the book and then it would still, it would still work in real life. Um, so Salinger does this by, uh, if you see here, lots of interruptions. So, you know, when you're talking with someone, you usually interrupt them. Um, he writes in a lot of incomplete sentences to also make this effect a really realistic dialogue. Um, so when uh, you're watching the movie, I want you to keep in mind or keep in keep in mind the dialogue of the text. Uh, how does it compare to the dialogue of the film? Did the text really provide realistic dialogue? Um, and then just think about that. You don't have to write anything down, but we'll be talking about it in class tomorrow. Also, in your online short stories, you can't see this, but in the actual printed copy, words are italicized. And that's really common for Salinger to italicize words that he wants emphasis. So in the text, silk, this word, silk handkerchief, is italicized to add emphasis. So it also creates... Um, emphasize words which you do in dialogue. I mean, like when you're talking, you emphasize certain words and he creates that effect through um, italics. And also what's really evident is there's a lot of detail. Uh, movement is described in a ton of detail. Let's find some examples. Okay, so when Sybil and Seymour are talking, there's a ton of, de of detail and the physical movements are described. So he brushed some sand out of his thin hair. Um, let's see, rested his chin on the top one. Oh wait, that's better. Lying prone now, he made two fists. Set one on top of the other, rested his chin on the top one. Um, let's see, Sybil took a step forward. Um, there's a ton of detail when he's talking about the way people are moving and he makes it more realistic. And then if you go back to the tab, the story is just beginning and Muriel is talking on the phone. She, the build up to her character is so detailed. Um, and I want you guys to think about whether uh, the lack of dialogue in the first scene of the film when Muriel is getting dressed, um, is it harder to pin down her as a character because there's no, there's just no dialogue and um, there's like a lack of is lack of detail in that sense. Um, and then just also think about like how closely does the film mimic the text when it comes to details. So look at the surroundings of the film, this the um, the background. I'm forgetting the word, what it, <laughs> the the hmm, you know just like the background of the scenes. Um, and then think about why did Salinger write in so much detail? So moving on, we'll also notice that the narrator is in third person omniscient. Um, but again, the narrator the narrator is limited in the sense that we don't know what happens at the end truly. We don't know what was what Seymour was thinking when he shot himself. Um, so why is that? Um, why does Salinger write in a way that is so removed from the events. What what does that create for the reader? And then the question I want you guys to think about is how does this compare to the film? And you have one other video to watch. Uh, and it's the film version of the short story. So enjoy that, and I'll see you in class tomorrow.